Hey friends, how's everyone doing out there today? Welcome to another edition of LP TV Disney Morning News Show. We're going to bring you what's going on in the world of Disney right now. My name is Gibby Mosley, co-founder here of Laughing Place. Over there to my right is Kyle Burbank, our managing editor. How you doing, Kyle? Doing well, Doobie. How about you? I'm doing okay. My nose is all clear now. Feeling good. Ready for another exciting day. So uh, without any of no. So anywho's, let's go do this. It's a little um, ode to my, one of my favorite vloggers there. Some people will understand that. We're going to start today the way we start every day by saying hello. Hey, Gio. Hey, Nikki B. Hey, Nikki B. Oh, she changed her photo between here and here. That's pretty cool. Is that, what is that? Cascade Mountain? Hanging on a hammock? Uh, and good morning, Rich. Thank you for reaching out to us. This is Rich Ostry of Mouse Fan Travel. If you've got a Disney World or Disneyland vacation, we recommend Mouse Fan Travel always. And uh, give Rich a try. He works there. He's a travel agent there. And uh, we recommend him as well. Cascade Peak, I'm right. All right. Let's start today the way we start every show. Okay. Kyle, yesterday, 88 and falling. Have they recovered? I mean, I want to say yes, but I also don't want to say... I'm going to say flat. Oh. Like Florida. And you are right. <laughs> nice. This is, this is like predicting... <laughs> this is like heads or tails, and you're predicting the edge and getting it. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> nice I don't going, know if it's that way, but yeah, sure. <laughs> And next up, let's see uh, what Ethan is channeling today. I'm a little concerned. Let's see if you're right to be concerned. Hello and welcome to the LP Disney weather update. After watching Secret Invasion yesterday, Kai Kai introduced me to some other shows he thought I might enjoy. And he was right. In between the lines there's a lot of obscurity. I'm not inclined to resign to maturity. If it's all right, then you're all wrong. But why bounce around to the same darn song? You'd rather run when you can't crawl. I know, you know, that I'm not telling the truth. I know, you know, they just don't have any proof. Embrace the deception, learn how to bend. Your worst inhibitions tend to psych you out in the end. Let's get to the weather. Anaheim is going to be sunny and 72 today because they don't know what summer is. Meanwhile, for the third day in a row, Walt Disney World has a marginal risk for severe weather today. In addition to a risk of high winds, the chance for large hail is also present today. Unfortunately, storms are likely to begin in the afternoon and stick around through the evening. This will keep temperatures in the 80s but, ahead of this, a high of 90 will be hit, equating to a triple-digit heat index. Castaway Key is expecting thunderstorms through lunchtime, followed by a cloudy day with a real feel of 100. Disneyland Paris's forecast shows light rain in the area right now, with showers lasting a couple more hours before clearing. Once they do, temps will fall from 70 down to 60. Tokyo will be overcast tomorrow and stay shy of 80 degrees. A few showers are also possible in the evening. Shanghai will be cloudy tomorrow and top out at 82. Lastly, Hong Kong could see isolated to scattered thunderstorms at various times throughout the day. Tomorrow's on paper high will once again be 88, but will feel like 101. Well, that's all for today. I have nothing to plug except, if you missed yesterday's show where Doobie accidentally sprayed himself with lotion, Go back and watch it, assuming he didn't delete the evidence, that is. Bye for now. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you. I thought I got off, got off with that one, but apparently not. Man, I was really thrown by the song today because I'm, I'm stuck in the 80s. That is not an yeah. 80s song. That was uh, the psych theme song, which, as Rebecca says, is not under the Disney umbrella somehow. It should be because it's so good. Off the rank, right. Next time they have to trade a sportscaster to Universal, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> So let's start today. There's a lot of fun stuff we need to go through from yesterday and even this morning, but I want to start with uh, Secret Invasion because, in a way, this is the biggest thing in the Disney universe right now. Episode 1 episode aired yesterday on Disney+. Plus. I know you and Mac talked about it extensively on Acts of Live. We're not going to spoil anything right here, but I don't know. Any, anything interesting in your discussion with Mac? Well, my interesting thing was with in conversation with you yesterday when we learned that your wife watched it without you so that she could then <laughs> help counsel you through it. <laughs> um, and, but as far as my conversation with Mac, uh, he had some, some insights uh, and we had some thoughts about how maybe some different editing could have uh, extra, 
made the tension last a little longer in this particular episode, but uh, um, we both thought it maybe wasn't the most um, like gripping intro first episode of one of the Marvel shows, um, but that we're still like excited to see where it goes and uh, like the overall vibe. Like the show, it's like dirt watching. Each thing uh, was like tense and interesting, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I need to see what happens next person as much. That's a very, very good way of, of summing it up, I think. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot too. I was lost. I did not ask my wife a bunch of questions out of principle. No, but until it was over. <laughs> but she's like, it, it ended and I didn't ask. She said, you didn't ask any questions. You understand that? And I said, I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> But I did enjoy it. I liked watching it, and I'm looking forward to the next episode. Um, I thought it was interesting where it cut where it did. I would have expected them to cut earlier. It was my my note. Okay, I can I can see that. I can definitely see that. I can't wait for the next episode because the the feel of this that you get while watching it is so much the feel I like when watching a TV show. That um, I mean, even if I have no idea what's going on, I don't care. As we know. It could, it could end um, like uh, The Happening tomorrow. I'd still be fine. What? All right. No. No, man, we're not. <laughs> happening lines just off the top of your head? <laughs> yeah. I love that movie. I, I love watching the parts of it that I love so much that I don't care about the other parts. Um, all right. Next up, let's get to... Oh, surprise. The credits were just credits given the previous Marvel they kind of vary. Sometimes they have. There, there was a. The first couple, it seemed like they. I forget, I forget if they all had post credits except for the end ones, or if it was like the last two had end credits. Or, um, yeah, there was like a thing for a while. But yeah, they, they varied. So um, I wasn't surprised. Per se. Uh, next up, let's stay in the secret invasion world and yet somehow transition to theme parks. Kyle, I'll let you. Yeah, so um, we knew something, well, we figured something was gonna happen and then we had a little bit more confirmation when Mike showed up and saw that there was like this stage thing set up, but it took a while <laughs> for something to happen. And then Nick Fury made his, uh, I believe his first appearance in uh, Avengers Campus. So here he is looking kind of like he does in Secret Invasion, except that he has an eye patch um, and we have not seen him with an eye patch yet on the series um so there's that um and uh yeah so this is kind of like a, instead of just a being a meet and greet it's more of like a little show where he brings people up and teaches them it seems like there's different versions of the show so there's those five uh words up there for, about the espionage thing and um mike saw two different versions of the show yesterday we have video of one of them and then when he was watching again to take some more photos he noticed that they're slightly different um so yeah we have no idea how long this goes for, you know, things in um, Avengers Campus just kind of pop up and then end. It's also possible that they'll bring in another character from the show later on. And so, yeah, we have, we never know. These things are very uh, short-lived, but still very cool that they're doing all of this. It cracks me up that Secret Invasion, which is not in any way a kid's show, when they bring it to the parks, you've still got kids who are a part of the experience. Um, it makes me laugh. I'm not sure what else they should do, but it still makes me laugh. These children probably are not watching Secret Invasion. <laughs> um, cool, so that is what is happening at Avengers Campus. Once again, Avengers Campus is a special place if for no other reason than whenever something new debuts in the films or on Disney+, Plus, Avengers Campus gets the characters pretty much always on that first day. And that's a really wonderful use of the area. Well, as I noted yesterday, Walt once said, Avengers Campus would never be completed as long as there's Marvel IP left in the contract. <laughs> he did not say that at the opening of Disneyland, though. It's... No, because he, he wasn't there. He wasn't so there. he couldn't have said that. <laughs> um, let's see. Before we get to more Disneyland stuff, because we do have a lot of Disneyland stuff from yesterday. Mike Celestino up at the day at the park. Got a lot of updates for us. But let's first look at Jeremiah this morning, where he was at Typhoon Lagoon. Sorry, Rebecca. He was at Typhoon Lagoon for the world's largest swim lesson, uh, 14th annual, right? Yes, 14th annual world's largest swim lesson. I don't know what that means. It's the 14th anniversary of the world's largest one. 
or if every year they actually top themselves. And so it's a new world record every year. But it is the world's largest swim lesson in Florida. And um, they brought in um, U.S. swimmer Mar Maritza Korea McClendon and taught some kids how to swim, which is pretty darn cool. Get up here. Show me that tweet. There we go. You can see some kids from the Boys and Girls Club of Flor Central Florida arriving for the lesson. And there is um, the Disney World Ambassadors, as well as, as well as Maritza, 600 Florida kids. What a wonderful community event at Typhoon Lagoon. How about that Mickey outfit? Do you like that? I like that yeah. shirt. I like those pants. Oh, yes. That's what I need. Rebecca, can you write that down? I would like some, what is that? Like, te not quite, is that spearmint? What would you call uh, it? I would go with teal. It could, it's mm -hmm. not quite aqua. It's somewhere in that blue greeny category that I enjoy so much. Okay. I, I like that color. I need some of that, especially when I get back to Florida. So I'm sure we'll be covering that later on on the site, but you can see that now on our Twitter, on our socials. Jeremiah is Mr. Social. Mint, that's the word. I said spearmint. I, I think it's mint. I agree with you, Gio. I trust your color, your color eye. You're the trivia master. Um, okay, getting back, actually. We, we should use the, you should pull up the photo, pull up a hex stripper and see. Um, a hex stripper? Is that what like, it's called? Like, you know, you sample the color and it tells you what the actual, like. Oh, okay. Can I type hex stripper into Google safely? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't know if that's the official term. Uh, but. Okay, we'll save that for later. I'll just um, open I'll open it in Photoshop while while we talk. This will be a, a pocket pick for finding out what color. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to uh, get yourself some Mickey pants, tell them I need pants in this hat. <laughs> Can you buy pants? Well, you're the pants expert. You just bought uh, six pair yesterday. Do you have a new short or something to show us of you unboxing those? Um, I don't have one yet, no, but I did try on my two new pairs yesterday, and I like them both. Um, some other ones are still on the way. Okay. So I have three uh, of my six pairs from two of the four companies. And never mind. I'm not even... So uh, next up, Mike Celestino, as I said, was all over the Disneyland Resort yesterday, seeing about the construction progress on certain things like... Um, San Francisco, San Francisco Square. So we've got some additional graphics showing. Um, let's see. Including one that says Bodine. So it looks like the bakery tours. Yeah, I'm going to get to that one in just a moment. Sorry. sorry. No, I'm sorry. That was rude, Kyle. I'm chastising myself already. There you go. So what's the news on this, you think, perhaps? Uh, well, we people for some reason just assume that because San Francisco was coming in, that the well, I figured that, I didn't know if the bread tour was sticking around, but I figured that they'd still have you know that bread there. But the Bodine Bakery tour, and there's an arrow, um, so I guess at least some part of the tour is sticking around, which I guess would just be you know, it's not just a tour, it's a production kitchen, so they're gonna keep making bread, you might as well let people watch, <laughs> give them some freebies. Ah, so lots of uh, graphics appearing all around. I know, it's turning into like a little city there. Kind of cool. Rita's turbine blenders there. So, um, what, what has not happened yet in any way is some vertical construction on the bridge. The most iconic part of San Francisco is the uh, Golden Gate Bridge-ish thing, and that is still not happening. Um, interesting, so Mike and, and Tony did a walk and talk yesterday and they were trying to guess how tall that was going to be, the, the vertical part of the bridge. And they had a very stupid discussion on that yesterday that um, I'm telling you about. So you can save your time that I didn't by not watching it. Um, let's see. Also, construction progress over at Disneyland. Mike Celestino was checking out Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Formerly Splash Mountain. Hasn't been closed for all that long, so not too much happening just yet. Um, but he did get pictures of what is there. You can go check that out on our site right now. And he also got some updated pictures of what's going on at Tiana's, help me out here, the Tiana's Palace, Tiana's Place. What is it at Disneyland? I think. Tiana's Palace. Yeah, I think it's Palace. Yeah. And that looks like it might be coming along with some 
um, painting and such. So definitely looking forward to that. Tiana and I here is a pretty good cook, and that's looking good. Got any, any progress on the color scheme there? Um, so, well, it's a little difficult because different shades, like the sh like where the sun is shining, but I think I'm going to go with this. I don't know what this translates to. Like, I don't know how to look up and be like, what would you call this color? But the, uh, the actual number, it's uh, A9F2D7 is uh, how you can oh, look no. up We're gonna... what I think that color is. That's the sunny side of his pants. Um, so it's a little bit lighter than you see in other parts of that photo, but I think that's... Keep that handy for a moment. I am going to do a live experiment And I here. think uh, looking at this, the sun version, I would say I think mint is pretty appropriate. What's the, what are the, the hex again? A9, uh -huh. F2, D7, 4, 8, 15... Uh, <laughs> so I'm saying 16, to chat GPT. I'm asking chat GPT right now. Um, what color would you call hashtag A9F2D7? Let's okay. see what chat GPT says. A light shade of aquamarine. I don't I think forgot about argue with that. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I was stuck in teal turquoise world. Forgot about aqua, yeah. Good All call. Right. Our, our job here is done. The, the sentient AI may now take over. Do you think they can do things like send them a picture um, like we do in Slack and say, is this new? And it would know the answer. <laughs> I mean, if I can do that by finding articles from other sites on um, Google, uh, I would hope they would. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. All right. So speaking of is this new, we have new sippers at Toontown featuring favorite characters, including Goofy and Max. Um, are you of the mind that the word sipper is too juvenile to be in usage by adults? Um, I think that it's appropriate for some of these. <laughs> like, that mini one definitely is a sipper. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get it. For some, some of them are more elaborate. You're like, no, that's just, I don't know what I, I don't know what I would call them. But these are, I think, more on the juvenile side, which makes sense because they're in Toontown. But the mini, this... Uh, Max and Goofy one is very cute. And uh, these are 549. No, they're not. <laughs> That's the uh, Dirty Dancing ending, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they made that into one. Um, $16.99 for the sipper. $549 if you just want a slushy. Fun stuff in Toontown. Let's see. What is next? Rebecca, if you're there, we're going to want you soon. Um... Also at Disneyland yesterday, Disney California Adventure yesterday. Oh, she's already there. Um, Learn to draw Wade and Ember from Elemental have debuted at the Animation Academy. Yeah, um, so kind of oddly, they don't have them specifically listed on the, the times guide that they have out front, the sandwich board. Um, so Mike found that he asked a cast member and they said that the artist choice, those ones would be the uh, elemental characters and so sure enough he went to to the first one and learned to draw Wade and I think he did a pretty decent job quite honestly. Did Mike actually do the drawing? He did. So oh, I don't know if he has a photo of if, if there's not a photo in there I'm gonna have to take it up with our uh, master Luke and see why. Oh oh <laughs> there we go. I knew he would. I had no I had faith in Luke the entire time. Uh, okay. but yeah that's Mike's drawing of Wade. Look at that signature. Mike's been doing some autograph sighting. That's pretty, that's pretty good. I now want Mike's autograph. I need to dig out my old Disney autograph book and get Mike to sign it. Oh, so when I covered it, I got sent down to cover this one time because no one else is available to cover the, the debut of a new character. I just videotaped the whole thing. I didn't actually They, they sent it. you down for that? They did. They did. All right. Yeah. Um, Owner's perk. Yeah, I don't know how long this is going to last. So obviously the artist choice isn't always going to be elemental. So if you're going in a couple of months, probably don't expect that. But for now, pretty cool. Wouldn't it be cool if the artist chose Flash? Yeah. You know what's funny is that uh, you get, learn to draw characters that probably nobody actually drew. So that's... That's a good point. At least not this one. I'm sure that they drew like you know concept art and stuff. I was gonna say, yeah. is Tony on? Is Tony, Tony on tell us how this works? Did somebody actually? Yeah. I guess you you have to do something on the computer. It's not 
typing and descriptions people. thing, but yeah, it was like, eh, don't know how much he was really this form. I think Wade here looks like um, like a baseball mascot. I don't know which really? baseball mascot. Which I just get that vibe. All right. So, for Pixar movies, are the characters drawn during conception? During the conceptualization process, art artists and designers at Pixar work on creating visual yada yada, typically modeled in three D. Yeah, I don't know. This is Chat GPT, by the way, my new assistant. You've got <laughs> Ethan. I've got Chat GPT helping me out during the show. Now. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring on Rebecca now. But first, Kyle, an introduction. Oh, the the, the video <laughs> that I'm supposed to pull. <laughs> if there was a hot key for this. <laughs> Think about how your house is laid out because I don't know you. We are just you're muted now. Oh, well, I didn't want you all to hear me ask Alexa to turn on the lights over here. Oh, well, it's funny because that would have turned on my lights here too. So. All right, this is Rebecca Mosley, she's my wife, and she comes on whenever we have foodie guides to go through, which we do. We have a we have what I call an excuse to do a foodie guide today, and that is beginning July 1st and running through August 13th, Flavors of Florida, presented by Quartzicle, will take over Disney Springs at Walt Disney World, mouth-watering and fresh flavors inspired by the Sunshine State. And so we are going to go through some of those mouth-watering and flesh, fresh, flesh flavors would be a whole different show. Fresh flavors. That's what you should call your lotions. <laughs> flesh flavors. <laughs> But first, but first, I just got back from Ohio. I was there for a date in Disneyana, and I got to go to Kings Island, where I got to try some of their food. And may I say that for uh, regional park, man, just like Knott's Berry Farm, food is where it's at at Kings Island. Um, the first thing that uh, I will uh, highlight is over at their new area. It's newly opened. And it is a um, funnel cake ale. Previously, they'd had a an ale there that was um, celebrating their famous blue ice cream. This time, they're going for funnel cake. I'll be honest, this had a little bit more, like, to me, it had a little bit more cinnamon hit to it. So it was more like um, a cinnamon uh, roll ale to me than it was um, to, uh, that it was funnel cake, not quite as sweet, but I, I loved it. And then this was the blue, they have the blue ice cream that they're famous for because they used to have a Smurf ride there forever ago, but, um, but the blue ice cream stayed. However, I'm not a fan of ice cream. So instead I tried the blue as a mousse and uh, it was so also uh, tasty, super tasty, super tasty. Mm -hmm. They had amazing rotisserie chicken. And um, over here are also something called the Sidewinder fries. And they're like um, nice thick cut French fries with ranch seasoning on them. Super tasty. So shout out to the amazing food that I had at Kings Island. And I didn't even get to try like some of their signature places. They have a Mediterranean style restaurant there as well um, with a lot of, you know, like fresh fresh food um, flavors, you know, that Mediterranean style. So they're really branching out from the traditional theme, uh, you know, amusement park fair. So loved it. I would totally get their annual food package if I lived there. <laughs> so since you got to go to Kings Island, did yep. you, do, do they have a, um, do they have like a, a tour you can buy that shows you all the Brady Bunch filming locations? No, but in the there's a restaurant that looks out over like the entrance area, and apparently they have like photographs and that kind of thing up in there. I I didn't I didn't get up there during this particular trip, but um, maybe my next visit out there. That, that maybe the greatest of all Brady Bunch episodes, where the family goes to a theme park and Mike's doing a presentation, and then the plans get switched with the poster, and they have to chase all over the park for it. Filmed at Kings Island. It was pouring rain, so I did not hit the co the big coasters, which total bummer for me because I've always wanted to go on Beast. And then they have one of those side-by-side, up-and-down type uh, coasters. 
and I would have done that. It was outdoor woody, but um, but like I say, with the rain, I was like, no, that's not a comfortable <laughs> in the speed and the rain. So I Luke mostly, Manning. I mostly right. did the inside dark ride that is atrocious but delightfully quirky. And then they have of all things. This is like the most amazing thing to me, and, and I'm I'm working on a ride up for Laughing Place. They had a dark the the dark ride that I rode is like I want to say the third incarnation of this space. And initially it was a dark ride called um, Phantom Theater. And then after after a um, an IP overlay, I think it was um, Scooby Doo, and now it's something called Boo Blasters where they give you interactive uh, little guns and you shoot at stuff. But um, first it was um, Phantom Theater. Well, since that attraction is so still so popular, even though it's been gone for so many decades, they made this little stage show and they like bring to life the characters of that attraction in a stage show during the summer at Kings Island. I just think that's the neatest idea. I'm, I'm, I'm now envisioning Adventures Through Inner Space, the musical. So, yeah. Why did the Brady Bunch have to go all the way to Ohio to, to film? It, was Magic Mountain not open or something? <laughs> like, I understand them being like, we're going to write a story in Hawaii so we can go to Hawaii, but Ohio? <laughs> That's a great uh, question, you Kyle. Now, <laughs> do you now get to think on this. I don't even know when Six Flags and Magic Mountain even opened. I don't know how yeah, old the theme it? park it is. I mean, if was not, then like around? knots. It was open. That's well, but I, I would imagine it was a tie-in with Although they, went, they didn't use that name. It was a different name in the show. Yeah. So I was going to say a tie-in with Six Flags, but no, it was a different name. You know, <laughs> with this my is buddy ChatGPT. This you can't ask me now because he'll start buffering. In the meantime. I can ask ChatGPT. It'll just find out for me. Why was I, I know well, that I am here to discuss um, food, uh, the flavors of Florida. And uh, Indiana Jones, I think, too. Yep. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, Flavors of Florida, starting July 1st. Um, oh, man, it couldn't find an answer for me. Over at, the robot. <laughs> over at Disney Springs, <laughs> they've got this tasty orange bird do dome cake. You're looking at layers of Grand Marnier soaked vanilla chiffon cake with a mandarin pate de fruit, which I don't even know what that is. Um, mandarin orange cream and um, uh, white chocolate crispy pearls they've also got a uh, orange honey orange gel and orange curd pastry um so you've got uh, both of those offerings and a strawberry spritzer that they're serving in a flavors of florida corksicle goblet check it out i like so i like popular. these things they're pretty cool hmm? you said corksicle so popular among our peeps yep. over at the boathouse um if i may you already got it. Okay, so you will control the pictures here, Rebecca. Pan, pan, <laughs> pan roasted um, golden tile fish. Well, are yours bigger than, are, are your pictures bigger than my pictures? My pictures are um, showing up yeah. small on my screen. Oh, bit. there you go. I'll let you control it then. Pan okay. roasted uh, golden tile fish. Um, you've also, um, but uh, but this actually, this picture, Doobie, this, these are images from Chef Art Smith's home cooking. So you've got a Key West shrimp cocktail on the top. That's homemade buttermilk crackers there on the base. Uh, with the Florida Crush cocktail, we're talking vodka, splash of orange juice, a little bit of agave syrup, some oranges and strawberries. So, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, oranges and strawberries. And then from Chicken Guy, a sunshine shake. That's vanilla soft serve and orange juice. Um, in the lower right is the City Works Eatery and Poor House. They're offering a seared grouper with Cuban spice black bean puree, some smoked watermelon pico de gallo. So interesting uh, flavor palette offered over there at City Works, but bringing in those Florida flavors. Anything strike you, Kyle, here? That's even edible? Um, I, I like, like, it's Florida. Let's just put an orange on it. <laughs> Yep. Pretty much what makes it a Florida treat. All right, here's the this one has an orange bird, so I know Kyle's excited. <laughs> We've got a Halloween shake with, with an orange bird on. <laughs> <laughs> the Coca-Cola rooftop uh, location is offering you a uh, float of Coca-Cola with vanilla ice cream and an orange cream bar shoved in the top. Then you've got the Lime Garage Burger at Deluxe Burger. This is a deluxe patty. Pepper jack cheese, pork Ugh. belly, 
fried green tomato, avocado, lime, and jalapeno spread there at the top. Yes, sir. So I'm a vegetarian, so I would like to ask the carnivores out there, what is appetizing about calling something belly that you put in your, in your mouth? That just sounds gross. Pork belly does not sound like a yummy treat. Okay, that's all. I still want to know like, if Kathy Bates is going to be on the burger. Because there's a fried green tomato. Okay. Oh, good movie. Great movie. <laughs> Um, and they've also got that uh, orange bird milkshake. So if you're looking for that, Dockside Margaritas is going to have this frozen orange daiquiri. And Edison is where you'll find the, uh, what they're calling the sunny disposition. This is some vodka, some orange liqueur, a little bit of uh, orange and tangelo and strawberry and grapefruit uh, decor there. Um, so it's a frozen top. screwdriver with some extra stuff. <laughs> uh-huh. You're a bartender too, Kyle? <laughs> You're a total renaissance man. I think the lime burger has proven popular. I seem to recall a number of Instagram photos of it um, when it's made its appearance um, previously. So. Right. Let's so, yeah. continue our tour. Uh, we've got Everglazed Donuts coming in with a orange glazed item, white buttercream, citrus frosting, orange flavored candy, and a little bit of fresh mint that Doobie will quickly toss aside. <laughs> but at least we know what color it is. <laughs> They've also got an orange lemonade, which, okay, with a, a <laughs> lemonade orange. with an orange juice cold foam. So. Oh, but, okay. That's kind of a nice treat. That doesn't sound bad at all. Yeah. Uh, Frontera. Really nice. Frontera's coming in with a shrimp dish. You've got uh, hibiscus citrus avocado salsa. So that's where you get that, you know, Florida citrus. A little bit of jicama, some cucumber, a little bit of lime, cilantro, tasty. Um, and then the, uh, um, I'm not sure what that beverage is, babe. That's the one thing I'm unsure of on this list. So the Everglades one? The, oh, no, no, the, the, one, other, in the, the one, one in the upper right. I'm, that may, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not seeing that um, in my descripts here, so. Okay, what scares me about that, I mean, the other thing I'd be throwing away from that donut, is that one of those sugary candy thingies? Yeah, I'd eat that, so you wouldn't have to throw yeah. it away, because I okay. love those. That's just disgusting. I, Doobie used to hate it. Those were part of, the tiny version of those were part of the kitchen sink, because, you know, it has all the toppings in the house. And you used to get so upset when you'd stumble on one of those. Do you remember? Yes, because they're disgusting. No, they're yummy. I don't know what. Mm. I don't know why you you, you don't know that. Frontera um, cochina. We've got the ganachery uh, coming in with some ganache squares, honey and lavender. You've got a key lime pop, which is white chocolate blended with lime key key lime juice, uh, fresh lime zest, and coated in dark chocolate that glass is that intentionally dirty but yeah they, that, that's a thing you do it's like a garnish is it like that stuff you put on mango i'm not sure it does it does. I thought, that, I thought that as well when I was when I was. Does Rebecca know about our secret plan? Yeah. yeah. Have you heard about our secret plan? Uh oh. No. What? Uh, okay. I'm scared. Uh, oh, well, are we supposed to talk about it on the air? Yeah. No. Don't uh, talk about it we, on the air. You okay. can tell me later. <laughs> There's slack for that. Scared. It's nothing to be scared of. Okay. All right. Moving on. Over to, uh, at Gideon's Bakehouse, a key lime chocolate chip cookie. Mm. What do you think, dude? Key lime and chocolate chips. I don't know. I like them both individually. I'm willing to try it with an open mind. I am not yeah. sure. So they're taking their vanilla bean cookie dough and they're infusing it with the lime juice and then they're coating it in those beautiful uh, premium chocolate chips that they use. And they have a uh, key lime pie crust crumbs also mixed within that batter. Um, their specialty uh, coffee beverage is going to be an orange mocha nitro cold brew. I'm and guessing that sounds great to you. It, it, it does. It's just I have to make sure that I don't get oat milk because apparently I learned last time I was there, the default when you get their 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 beverage is a oat milk. 
And I don't know if it's, I don't know if something else is even available. I would have to learn that because, like I say, I walked away. I just ordered my drink. I walked away. I started drinking it. I told our team, "Why is everybody raving about this? It's kind of gritty and earthy to me." And they said, "Oh, that's because it has the oat milk." And so I'm like, oh, "Okay." So now the next step is for me to determine if I can get it without the oat milk because I'm not an oat milk fan. I like oat milk. Yep. So I'm in our fridge right now. Uh, down below is what you'll enough. find at House of Blues. In Hamburger Helper. Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> do you try to make Hamburger Helper with oat milk wow. and that is not the thing to do. I have a long list of dumb I am. <laughs> oh, hey, look, Luke Manning is saying he thinks that the drinks come, that there's no other option because he also doesn't like it. Can I make a request for Luke to do a ranking of the dairy-like additives for coffee? <laughs> oh, and for those of you who don't know, Luke Manning is the ranking specialist here at <laughs> Laughing Place. So you can find various attractions ranked by Luke, whether it's Epcot attractions or Walt Disney uh, Magic Kingdom or other, other, uh, other parks as well. Oh, Gio also chiming in. With the, I wasn't, everybody was no, raving no. to me. They were telling me that they, they were like the bomb. And that I was doesn't so say offended. I wasn't. That says I, I was. He meant to. Are you it's sure? So Geo doesn't make mistakes. Uh, he he right. it was followed with a sadly. Luke has his rankings up hey. here. Sorry. Oh, hey. Almond, soy, coconut, Almond, oat. Yeah, you're missing milk um, in its various Well, no, you said non dairy. No, no, I said dairy. Okay, I'm sorry. When I meant dairy like, I meant the dairy, the dairy or dairy like. Yeah, dairy is dairy like. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the white stuff you can add to coffee, so you got to include all the milks and all this fat, as well as creamer, as well as like a crematory or a cremate or whatever that stuff is. So update your rankings, Luke. Uh, and at the bottom, the bottom two pictures, that's House of Blue. So you've got a sunshine lager from a winter garden based local brewery called the Crooked Can and a collection of mahi tacos. So it's funny because this one, it just says local mahi tacos with pickled onion, coleslaw. There's no citrusy element labeled on this, but it's a local Florida oh. mahi. So many ways to do, many ways to celebrate <laughs> Florida. Uh, yeah, this well, one has a Tetris though. I, can I ask if you guys are orange garage or lime garage people? Depends on where I'm going. Oh, I'm like, what are you talking about? You literally mean the garage. <laughs> I literally park. mean the garage. Yeah, I am an really... orange garage person. But I park all the way over, um, and like as like that last row if I can, so that I end up uh, right over by like World of Coke and. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't care. Whatever's easiest to get into. And the Starbucks. Is usually, I'm usually heading to the Starbucks, so that's why I'm an orange garage. Luke Blue is garage. orange garage, regardless of where he's Lime going. Lime is trash. Yeah, Lime is trash. These are the opinions Luke. I wanted. Wow. Luke, okay. Luke has ranked the garages now. Orange at the top. Lime is trash. There you go. Never part of the animal moose. Luke will have to help me here because I'm not a I'm not a local, so I haven't had to deal with it too often. But I feel like Lime is the one that doesn't open as early as Orange, and so it can be annoying if you get there too early. But you'll have to help me because I got stuck in that where I drove into the garage and they were like, no, it is not yet 10 a.m. You may not what work here. And I had to just keep driving. Like, seriously, it was like, seriously, it was seriously like two minutes until whatever. And I had that's to just drive. Trash. So, what's yeah. the one? What's the one that's across the street? So you get to Great walk friend. on the bridge. Great I love that problems. one because I love walking over that bridge. But yes. it's barely ever available to the general public. It's it's the cast it's the cast member and vendor parking. But maybe if the general there. maybe if the general public showed them a little tenderness. Kyle, anything, Kyle? Okay, thank you. All right. Technically, everyone goes to Lime because it's centrally located, but it's also quite a bit smaller than Orange, so it's always busy. Thank you, Luke. Um, Did you the items fruit or just answering our question of what it was. <laughs> Yeah, the, the items question. that you've been gazing at here are from Haleo. Jose <laughs> <laughs> Andres, uh, you're looking at a, this, I think, Doobie, you would really like this one on the upper left. It is a salad with compressed watermelon, heirloom tomatoes, goat cheese, pistachios, sherry dressing, something called a PX reduction. D do you guys know what that is? 
What is PX reduction? <laughs> Doobie's got a new brain. <laughs> um, on the upper right, I don't know if this is something you would try, Kyle. It's thinly sliced scallops with a citrus dressing. I would try it having recently tried scallops, but I also don't really like uh, fruit. So. Oh, okay. So it would lose I you. I don't like the texture of fruit. I like the flavors of fruit. How oh. about these beer battered shrimp with a caper mayonnaise? There's way too much shrimp hanging out of the back of that shrimp, so no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ew, ew, you carnivores are crazy. The one, the one in the bottom middle is the one that hit that I'm I would want to try, and that is a seared duck breast with sweet peaches and Valencia orange glaze glaze. Because that sounds like an elevated duck a la rose kind of dynamic, but with like that Mexican flair, a little bit sweet with the peaches, super Super tasty to me. Yeah, um, to and, there. and then the last one is a cured Serrano ham Sorry. with watermelon and sherry dressing. But now Doobie's moved on to Jock Lindsay's hanger bar, right? Well, it's just funny you mentioned Valencia, Valencia because we were talking about Magic Mountain earlier. Yeah. It all comes together. Yeah. Yep. So PX, uh, by the way, paper. PX reduction is a reduction by Pedro Jimenez. Jimenez starting with an X. Um, oh, okay. The same as reduction. All right, go on. Oh, cool. Okay. There you go. Signature reduction. Uh, we've no got help from chat GPT. I had to use old fashioned Google for that. We've got <laughs> some shrimp tacos with some watermelon and we've got a uh, citrus old fashioned. Oh no, this is the Florida mural, mule. So you've got uh, Orlando orange vodka, ginger beer, orange juice, and a simple syrup served in the signature mule mug. Do you think the syrup feels insulted by being called, called simple? No. Okay. Probably right. If you called them Next basic, step. then they would. <laughs> I love that. In the upper left is a hot honey latte coming from Joffrey's. And look, you can get an, a delightful special character, including the adorable Buzzy. Do you still like him, Kyle? Is he okay? Um, sure. Okay. By the way, when you're at Disney World, Joffrey's, you can get these cold foam uh, at Disney Springs, these cold foam beverages with the adorable characters on them. So if you want you know, a little bit of fun with your uh, coffee. Don't forget to uh, check that out. Uh, uh, it's Spike to be, I think, by the way. Huh? Spike. Spike. Oh, thank you. No, that was a mental error on my part. Thank you for the correction. Well, it's, I'm like, it doesn't sound right, because I know Buzzy yeah. is like the, no, the guy isn't. from Cranium Command. It, so yeah, like no, totally. No, totally. Just brain we'll hiccup on my part. In three minutes. <laughs> Stat boy. In the bottom right is a... Uh, Dreamsicle cocktail from Marimoto. You've also got pictured here a a uh, cream caramel with orange segments and sweet cream and candied zest. It's an orange blossom dessert. And in the upper right are uh, clams with um, flat rice noodles, uh, Chinese bean sauce, black bean sauce, some uh, garlic chives. They call it the Cedar Key Clams Chow Fun. And that's over at Morimoto. That's a flan. That is flan, essentially, right? That's what it seems like to me. Because, I mean, it's a, uh, yeah. I love a flan. Kyle, do you love a flan? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm shocked. Wow. Okay. Sorry. I mean, I think I've had flan. I've had things like flan, so I'm sure I'd like Paddlefish flan has life. a... Torched meringue key lime pie, pizza. Haunt has this uh, salami calabresi mm. with chili and a local Orlando petal honey. That this sounds is good. this sounds strange to me. The pie? The no the the pizza. That's what I, it's like. I want Mac to try this thing. Honey on pizza. The oh, pizza it's petal diavola. Honey. Is petal honey fundamentally different from bee honey? Well, it, it lets you know kind of the origin of the of the honey, because like you, you have various, you know, you have like all sorts of honey flavoring, as you know, because for a while there you were trying to be a honey connoisseur. OK, dude, we does, honey, honey does honey flavoring, is it added to the honey or does it come from? No, it's based on how the bees do their pollination. It depends. I mean, the the ones that you were talk the ones that you were dealing with back in the time. Yes, it was because of where what they would pollinate and and that type of dynamic came into play, and then would therefore impact the flavoring of the honey. That is insane. Yeah. 
my mind is now blown yet again. Okay. I, I am I am sure that there are also honeys that are, you know, additionally flavored or, or, or whatever. I want to try some Orlando it's Petal Honey Nut Cheerios. Bland. He's criticizing his pun. <laughs> you don't appreciate that one? I don't. There is, there is a Key West pink shrimp ceviche from the Polite Pig, because when I think of shrimp ceviche, I think, hey, let me go to this Polite Pig. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to have a smoked melon. Yeah, I had some shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Over, oh, do me. Okay, what do you think? I know you're a bread pudding fan. I, know I you, am. I know you adore the one at Raglan Road. I do. This is a sweet orange pudding with whipped cream and an orange butterscotch sauce. So in essence, yeah. think bread pudding with orangey. Um, yes, this is a big yes. I'm a little worried about the orange, but I'm willing to give it a try. Butterscotch is so incredible. I let's go. Let's go do this tonight. How are you worried about orange? What does that mean? When I think bread pudding, and then I think orange, orange on desserts sometimes just doesn't quite work. Which is sad because that's the, kind of the entire theme of this booty guy. <laughs> but I could it's just yeah. for the old folk. I got the <laughs> joke, but I'm just saying that's not how you pronounce flan. So it's, it's not like, flan, it's flan. Depends. The aunts in flan stay mainly on the flan. <laughs> anyway, I want to try it. I might love it, but I might be turned off by the orange. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> We've got some jerk seasoned mahi-mahi in the lower right coming to you from Rainforest <laughs> Cafe. Wait, why did you stress the jerk guy right in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Alongside some coconut shrimp uh, with a coconut rub sauce and Caribbean rice. So there you go. That's from your friends over at Rainforest uh, Cafe. <laughs> Uh, if you're looking for a snack as you wander, Salt and Straw has a sherbet with swirls of ribboned dark chocolate. It has a floral undertone, apparently, these strands of dark chocolate. Uh, they just make up words to add. I feel like every time they say reduction or undertone or something, they just add a dollar to the price. <laughs> <laughs> Spice and Tea Exchange is bringing, is bringing a Florida sunshine tea, as you imagine. Some floral and citrus notes. Splitsville has a, a Key West pink shrimp salad and a Key Lime Pie Martini. Oh, graham cracker rim. Oh, yes. Becca likes her martini. That looks good with the graham cracker rim and the color of it and the graham cracker hanging out the top. That actually looks very yummy. You know, you could have a lot of fun if you like cut the lime a little differently on one on both sides that you could make it like a baby Yoda drink. I'm, if this were two years ago, it, <laughs> when did this thing launch in 2019? Are we almost four years in the Disney Plus already? Oh my goodness. Yeah, it'll be in um, October, right? November 12th, I think. November, yeah. Wow. If this were four years ago, they would have done that. I can't believe four years already. Okay. Uh, Cuban sandwich from STK. Some conch fritters with lime wedges from STK. A key lime bar with meringue, lime zest, and toasted coconut. And sunshine churros is rolling the churro in an orange sugar topped with cream cheese frosting, sprinkles, and orange and white toppings. This is really the best looking collection of uh, items we've had so far. This is your, this is the Kyle collection. I mean, I know I, the Cuban looks good because I can't see the things I don't want on it, but it, it still <laughs> looks delicious. Um, and yeah, everything looks good here. Although it's STK, so I imagine even a Cuban sandwich there is going to be <laughs> expensive and it'll be too loud and dark inside. By the way, the, S, the Cuban sandwich is simply pulled pork, ham. Pulled pork ham. Cheese, pickles, and mustard. Yeah, the pickles and mustard were... It, it oh, was, my goodness. They condiment free. That's so much easier, you know. Yeah, actually, yeah. Becca made me a, a quesadilla the other day. That I was like, well, this is almost like a, Cubans, uh, a Cuban quesadilla without the uh, the parts that I don't want. Mm -hmm. Which is to say it was a ham and cheese quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> I 
really am doing a foodie guide with the most picky eaters in the universe. I am not a picky eater. I'm just a vegetarian. Kyle is just wacky. We also <laughs> so you eat dairy. You just don't like dairy milk because it's just too much, or I, you know that lactose thing. And I and I like oat milk just fine, and it's probably a little better for you. So why not? I I could do milk just fine and everything. I just will regret it later. Gotcha. Swirls on the water gives you a orange bird sundae. So uh, they, there's a lot of fun there. Uh, Ter Terralina Crafted Italian has a, a variety of sodas. So you've got a classic Italian spritz with bitter orange, rhubarb, subtle herb notes. You've got what they're calling the Hugo, which has elderflower, lemon, and mint, or the Rosa, which has grapefruit, bitter herbs, and flowers. Elderflower, any relationship to age? Is there like a younger flower? Or is that just like something called? Like no, it's been elected by its church to help serve. So like a bishop <laughs> flower? Yeah. Okay. Uh, T-Rex has the or, 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 sure oyster. <laughs> T-Rex has the Oyster City Mango Pale Ale. Uh, so this has some hints of mango and uh, a blackened tuna dish. I <laughs> I know you weren't on Parks Talk um, last week, Rebecca, but Mike yeah. loves T-Rex. He is a huge oh, T-Rex yeah. fan. Mike Celestino. Yeah, I do too, but I'm not like, oh, I'm at Disney World. I need to make sure I go to T-Rex. I gave my father a Landry's gift card for Father's Day so that he could go to any of the amazing Landry's fun with his uh, grandsons who are still in, in Florida with him. So, yeah. And that includes T-Rex? T-Rex. Jack and Yeti, Rainforest Cafe, um, over at Universal um, CityWalk, uh, Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. That's oh, part wow. of it as well. They have other mm -hmm. ones, but those are the ones that I think go specifically within kind of that tourism zone. My dad's um, going to be in Florida in December, so maybe I should get him a Capone's gift card. Mm. I love that idea. Send him there. Make sure he asks for bull. Then cause a ruckus. We had Jer Jer wait, that wasn't on the air. Never mind, that was off the air. Go on. Uh, strawberry <laughs> strawberry shortcake bombolato, which is a cake batter gelato, strawberry sauce, and fresh strawberries inside of a warm Italian donut. That's yummy sounding. Very yummy. Uh, orange blossom cannoli. Do you like cannolis or is the texture put you off, um, Kyle? I like cannolo. And cannoli being the plural. Uh, yeah, I like them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Technically. Yep, yep, sorry. I gotta hit the. <laughs> now, just a minute. <laughs> Talk about picky. Is that avocado toast? Uh, it's a spin on it because you're dealing with it's actually a delightful burrata. So that's a, a, a cheese uh, oh, item nice. with, with uh, tomatoes from the villages so you have villages tomatoes like where the older yeah. where the elder people live <laughs> yes yeah that's what you think of it as yes but they, they also like a, are they like amish they make I, food that I they sell around the way, here? <laughs> i i don't i don't know for sure but i'm i'm assuming because this is focusing on florida so these are all locally grown like tomatoes corn and then you have a, a sourdough beach these are all ingredients sourced from florida We'll have to try this old hearth sourdough. I guess it's a flour sourdough. And you've got a frozen old fashioned, Kyle, Dole Whip orange and eight year old Tennessee whiskey. Yeah, Becca would want to try that. Um, I'm wearing my old fashioned the, the cannoli? Uh, the cannoli is an orange blossom. Okay. Cannoli. So I orange asked. Blossom, special. <laughs> I asked, I asked my, my assistant here if the villagers are known for their tomatoes. They said, no, they're not particularly known for their tomatoes. They are known for their active lifestyle, golf courses, recreational amenities, and various organized activities for residents. <laughs> okay. Man, Becca, Laughing Place needs to send Becca and I on a on a trip to sample various beverages all around Walt Disney World. <laughs> so we can have a scandal? I'm just <laughs> Just saying. Just remain seated after you uh, ride. The, after that. <laughs> no, I said sample, not overindulge. I said sample. drinking around the world. I was very no. I said sample. No, we were different. Here. I, you guys are two of the most responsible people. I know. <laughs> yeah, neither Becca nor I would be drinking around the world. Okay, next. Next and final. 
Uh, Yasake, Florida. We've got a poke bowl with grilled chicken, crispy uh, lettuce, tomatoes. I'm sorry, not tomatoes, carrots, avocado, mandarin oranges with a tempura crunch, a roasted sesame sauce over top of that. And to the right is a Florida sunset. It's a combination. It's a tropical blend of sakes with some banana and peach syrups and some pineapple juice. And I'm sorry, but all I can think of reading that is they're destroying those sakes with fruity syrups. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, wait, I have two more. You do? Yeah, the bottom two. I. Oh, you have two more on that one. I'm sorry. Yeah. The blood orange gin and tonic, and then a key lime margarita. And the only reason why I didn't want you to go away is because the the key lime margarita. That sounds fun. Want people to know that's at Disney Springs. Don't miss out. Key lime margarita, yummy yummy. Uh, do you have any opinion, Rebecca, on the key lime margarita? Yummy yummy. <laughs> Fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> the other version of the wiggles. Yummy yummy. Key lime margarita. <laughs> All right. Um, that is the Florida foodie guide. Florida. Um, is a state in the United States of America, and uh, did Chachi <laughs> Pizza tell you that? <laughs> Shut up. Um, Flavors of Florida, presented by Cork Sickle, starting July 1st, which is about a week away, running through August 13th at the Sunshine at Disney Springs, <laughs> at Walt Disney World, celebrating the Sunshine State. And then there's more food coming. Um, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is coming soon to Disneyland and Disney World and every place else in the world. But the food is coming to Disneyland and Disney World, and they're having um, a date for when that starts. The foodie, I don't see a date for when the food starts. So, but we'll no, share they some did, of that. I didn't see it. I didn't see a date. Yeah, I looked. I looked through it. I didn't see a date either. But the food looks interesting. Oh, we're don't jumping right there? into more food. Oh, okay, cool. I'm. What? I thought you might bump into like other stories. I was gonna have to just hang out and wait for you guys to get back. To yeah, food. let's do the food. Let's do the food. Okay, cool. So, um, on this, this is a collection of items that we're gonna talk about as Doobie scrolls through it. So you might as well just start scrolling. Don't these? Okay. Look this is a teaser. <laughs> what we're about we're about to talk about. We're starting off with the patisserie. Um, these are the small petite cakes that they do over at Disney Springs. Amaretta's uh, patisserie. What do you guys think? Indiana Jones, fedora, hat? Thank Don't you. want to eat it, no. I'm more it's fond of the um, pinata and um, the pinata thing, because these are the ones where you like bite into it and then there's more like tasty funness um, inside. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, too much fondant. It's just not that exciting. Not, yeah, fondant's not, fondant not yummy. Fondant's not yummy. How about this one? Does this look good? I don't know what it is, but yeah. It's a medallion. Chocolate. So just a chocolate medallion? Yeah. yeah. How can you go wrong? And then we're back to Stonehenge. The giant bacon for all mankind. These are chocolate dipped uh, bacon slabs. Yeah, Mike got to try these, didn't he? Um, when he was at the yes. thing, we talked about yeah, how it looks like Stonehenge. Yeah. And uh, we've got... Disney Hollywood yeah. Studios, you'll have this uh, green tea which it doesn't look very green. Does it? it does not look green at all. When green tea goes bad, does it turn a different color? I think that's already available at the, the Den of Destiny. <laughs> I mean, your favorite place, Rebecca, the Bengal Barbecue. Have yeah, they're going to have turnover. they're going to have a, a few new items. They've got this forbidden turnover. You know, it looks like the, the eye. We've got a uh, lamb uh, copta uh, skewer, brown lamb, super tasty, typically. I'm a big fan of lamb copta, so I'm excited to see this coming to Bengal Barbecue, a vegetable platter uh, with the- Maybe, I thought of you. I know, let me let me analyze this right here. How would eat very bread? boring. Yeah, this looks like bread and some yummy dipping sauces. I don't know what the point of vegetables are in a vegetable platter. Okay. And finally is the adventurous platter. You're looking at some kebab skewers, pearl couscous, rice. So once again, these, the, the um, They've been teased by Disney Eats Instagram. Uh, some of these items are already available on the East Coast. I checked this morning. I still did not see them listed as available at Disneyland. But when they are, we will uh, be sure to let you know. And if you're going to Disneyland, check Bengal Barbecue because that's where the fun Indiana Jones Eats are popping up. You love Bengal Barbecue. Oh, man. Right. Yeah. No, we used to just drive down from uh, our home up in uh, Sunland just to go eat Bengal barbecue. Wow. Like. Yeah. yeah. Back when I used to eat barbecue. 
What? Not you. You weren't there. Oh, I wasn't with you then? No, that was, that was before I met you. Okay. No wonder I don't remember. All right, let's when keep Rebecca on. Vegetarian. What? When did I become a vegetarian? When I was 16. He's yeah, been a so... vegetarian. I'm just being an idiot, Kyle. <laughs> What am I talking Let, about now? Let's keep Rebecca on for this. Okay. So we on this at Indiana Jones Alpha Center at Disneyland as well, I guess. Did you hear him okay, Rebecca? His audio nope. seemed a little weird. I, I, I it, it came in at the end. Did you like swallow your microphone? No, no, no. no. The, uh, I the can't swallow my microphone since I'm on my computer. Um, yeah, you're fine now. Okay, on this day, this is the portion of the program where I give you what's something that happened on this very day at some point in history. And Kyle and now Rebecca will try to guess what it is. Um, on this day in 1949, we had a birth. Any guesses? I'll give you more hints. Um, Thanks. Uh, actress, one of the most acclaimed actresses of all time. Known for a couple of Disney roles, but definitely not known as a Disney actress. But when I say one of the most acclaimed actors of all time, this is the name Streep. that instantly comes to mind. Meryl Streep herself was born on this day in 1949. Yeah, has a couple of Disney roles and also known for crapping on Disney for some reason. <laughs> she was in Mary Poppins Return, she was in Into the Woods, and she was the voice, I'm sorry, the narrator for Wings of Life back in Disney Hey, Doobie, Disney how, do you, how yes. do you say her first name? Meryl. How do you say your first name? Meryl. Yeah, I've heard some people say Merle, so I was just curious Merle? how you guys say it. <laughs> I see. Knowing Merle. Doobie and his Burry, I was just kind of curious. Mm -hmm. All right, on this day in 1955, a Disney animated feature was released. That is all you need. On this day in what year? 1955. Oh my. Oh, your movie years? No, I don't know my movie years, but I'm going to guess because I saw a D23 article. Is it Summer Magic? It is not. It's an animated uh, feature. Alice. Oh, animated feature. Oh. Yes. Animated feature. No, this is live action. I wouldn't expect. Animated feature. Okay. Alice was 1951. Okay. I should text I should text my son. He will know. Yeah. Wow. Alice was 51. Peter Pan was 53. And then came... Not Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so disappointing. Lady and the Tramp, 1955. So You're giving me a Tony. Everybody wants to be a tramp. <laughs> <laughs> adding to today's list, aren't you, Kyle? Hey, can I, can I, like, interrupt this with, like, other news? I guess. Sure. Look, check it out. We were talking about Indiana Jones, and during this show this morning, Luke, wrote an article that Indiana Jones is going to be appearing at uh, Disneyland's Adventureland. You're going to be able to, you know, enjoy a little bit of roaming indie over there. So I was trying to tell you, but when I apparently swallowed my microphone. Oh, okay. You can, you can hit play on that Instagram if you want. Do you remember okay. when he was there, they did the whole summer of indie thing for Crystal? Is it going to be young indie? Do you think he doesn't or, look? He, I don't think they're going to hire an eighty-year-old now. <laughs> and is he going to is he going to swing or slide down the Matterhorn like he uh, did? There's no treehouse cool. for him to fight on, <laughs> unless. Wow. There you Succinct. go. A little Succinct. bit of Indy coming. All right, on this day, back to on this day. That's exciting, June 30th. Same day as the movie, quite fitly. I'm going to put them in Avengers Campus, right? That's where they put day and date characters. On this day in 1970, something very important to the Disney company was established. It's kind of hard to describe what this is, but it was established. You can go, some people can go visit it on the Disney Studio lot. Um, yeah, there's no some people can go visit, what, the commissary? And cast yeah, members can like go visit it on the Disney building, that building with the hat, but that wasn't... Where else? Where else? It's the whole department of Disney was established that preserves the history of the company. Oh, the archives? The Walt Disney archives were established on this day in 1970 by one wow. Dave Smith. How about that? Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, have Happy you ever been there? The archives. Have you got to visit there, Rebecca? Yes. Kyle? I, yeah, been to the downstairs one and then the library upstairs. 
Juby? No, not really. Right. I haven't. I, was... I haven't. I haven't done what he said. I just. Been... I went. I went in the lobby once. Yeah, I went in the lobby once. I feel like I haven't really done the archives just by going in the lobby once. Yeah. I want to be special. All right, on this day, Rebecca, you might get this one. There's no way Kyle's getting this one. I learned, I heard of this movie when I did this this morning. On this day in 1971, a movie came out starring Brian Keith, Harry Morgan, John Ritter, a crotchety old ranch owner named John McCandless fights to be able to live his way of life regardless of the law. Is it on Disney Plus? I can't imagine it is, but I'm going to go check right now. <laughs> I should have just asked my friend here. But I'm going to go check. I don't. I don't recognize it by the descript, but I have a feeling I'm going to be annoyed when you tell me the name of the film because Harry Morgan, James Garner. I feel like I should. I should remember this film. It's, from the it's, it's not on Disney Plus. Here's what I'm going to do. See if this helps you at all. Just based on this portion of the poster, do you know what it is? Something with an S. No, but I understand why it's not on Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> is Scandalous John. Ever heard of this movie? No. Me either. <laughs> but it is a Disney movie from 1971. T-W-L. On this day in 1971. The day we learned. Yeah, got it. I figured it out. <laughs> I was hoping Kyle, Kyle had that look I'm so familiar with as I watch TV with you. <laughs> Well, yesterday he said, I, I thought he said PTL, <laughs> and I was like, praise the Lord. Oh, no, today I, he said T-I-L. Nice. <laughs> On this day in 1977, what Disney animated feature was released? Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Disney animated feature. One of Would your that have been The Rescuers? Favorites. It is The Rescuers, Rebecca. Good job. Uh, quick question for both of you. Is The Rescuers Down Under a part of the Disney Renaissance? Sure. Yes. Wrong. Okay, on this day. New ground. It had, um, I mean, they continued the trend of the <laughs> using computers. <laughs> like how Doobie asks us our opinion. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> have John Candy in it. Can you go look? On this day in 1985, something opened at Disneyland. Not a ride. Not a show. Eh. Maybe a show, but more of a, a location for people to go and have a good time. 1985. 1985 in Fantasyland. I'll help you out in Fantasyland. Videopolis. Yes. Good going, Rebecca. I know you were there in your high school years dancing the night away at Videopolis. Were you not? No. Yeah. No, it was a. It was one of those early, the ruining Disneyland moments. <laughs> Like, All the way back not, in '85, the world Walt intended. Life? Walt intended us to end. Leave the world. Leave the outside world by. Why is this loud rock music blaring at me? <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> That's when I realized I was old. Yeah. All right. I, old I, I, I know. Well. <laughs> because of our conversation yesterday, Rebecca, I know you know this one. So this is for Kyle. On this day in 1988, one of the most technically important movies ever was made. Or at least. Sorry, I got distracted by looking at uh, our to-do. Yeah. Say it again, please. In 1988, a movie yeah. of um, technical significance was released. 1988. I don't know. The only thing that's coming to mind is Tron, but that was earlier, wasn't it? Yes. Use characters from not only Disney, but other studios. Goodness, oh, Roger good. Rabbit? Yeah, that's a pretty big hit. 35 <laughs> years. 35 years of Roger. Yeah, and good job, saw, Benji. <laughs> and, and on Facebook, I saw that some of the creative team from the got together at Thomas Shanners. Oh, that's cool. It, I love that. I'm trying to remember whose Facebook it was. Sorry, I'm blanking. Author, Is this like an author. I don't know what's new about the thing that I just put in. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, I'm glad Benji's here, because this next one is of particularly significance to Benji, who is there in our chat. So, okay. on this day, and that's all the hints you're getting. On this day in 2005, something opened, not at a theme park, but it is open to all guests, in California. And it is very Disney-related. 2005, and of significance to Benji. Right. Oh, I have a guess. No. Where is this? California. Oh, okay. It's like the buses. Uh, <laughs> uh, wow. 
Uh, uh, this the the. Not a chance. Ice cream shop, is it? It can. The Walt Disney Soda Fountain okay. and Studio Store. There you go. Soda Big Fountain. Of course. The Soda Fountain. You know, Where they still ice... do pin releases there that are quite <laughs> popular. They sell out very quickly. I did not know that, and I would not yeah. have guessed that. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wasn't that the Bakersfield ice cream? Isn't that where the ice cream came from? It was, and then it became Gear. It didn't become Ghirardelli's. Is it yes. still Ghirardelli's? I think it's, it is a Ghirardelli's now, isn't it? I, no I believe it is. And finally, folks, on this day in 19, if 19 were 20, in 2012, um, we did survive, and a Pixar movie came out that year. What was it? Pixar movie, 2012, piece of cake. I, I, okay, car, no, we already did Cars, didn't we? Uh, cars 2. Um, Electric Boogaloo, it was not Cars 2. Um, I have no idea. Uh, uh, good uh, diet, no, that was way later. Um, 2012, I don't know, Up? I wasn't, I wasn't kind of good saying. with dates that matter. How am I gonna be any good? There aren't that many Pixar movies and somehow you guys have managed to not name this one. <laughs> Ratatouille. Keep going. Wally. Keep going. Um, now I just want to see if this one even comes to mind. <laughs> um, is it a good don't, one? Don't look at the chat. Don't look at the chat. That's cheating. Okay, I'm not looking in the chat. I'm still in the Oh, I've chat. seen the chat. I was going to put right, it up. So, this is for Kyle. Okay. We'll, um, we'll wait. There aren't that many Pixar movies. <laughs> yeah, and yet. Um, I always like, forget this one is Pixar. I'll be honest. I'm trying to think of like where I was in 2012. I was still living in California. I wasn't quite yet married. Um, by the way, Doobie, there's a link in the private chat that is now being hyped by Midi in the public chat. I'm ready. Chat. I'm ready. As soon as Kyle comes up with this movie, <laughs> just go on. <laughs> it's the it's Pixar Princess movie. Oh, Brave. brave. Yes. Goodness me. Wow. Yo. Anyway. All right, we have uh, never seen it. Have, uh, Me either. I have. Me either. I have seen. I've seen the segment of World of Color, and it feels long enough that I have seen it. This just in from the Disney Park blog. You can't start talking until the video goes away. Uh, new detailed release for San Francisco Square. We were just talking about San Francisco oh. Square earlier in the show, so I'm showing Mike construction pictures from there. So this literally just came out. We're gonna read this together to see what's new here. Um, looks like you'll have the opportunity to interact with Hero and his huggable healthcare companion Baymax outside the Hamaba Bot Shop. <laughs> um, and there's a look at that right there. Uh, this is where the Big Hero 16 builds and innovates high-tech gear, so you may also see a few of their upcoming inventions. Near the hat shop will be San Francisco Maker's Market storefront with unique apparel, homeware, and more featuring Baymax and Friends. Um, sorry, oh, that's what this is here. The concept art above. So this, I'm sorry, this is the concept art for uh, the Maker's Market. You can see the merch there. Let's see. All right, we'll keep going. So um, the bakery tour. Aunt Cass Cafe, the second bakery cafe operated by Heroes Living Aunt, will serve dishes, soups, and freshly baked boudin sourdough bread bowls and more inspired by Japanese culture. On the outside of this quick service restaurant, you'll find a mural of Aunt Cass's lucky pet cat, Mochi. So, Mochi. Is it Mochi? Sorry. This is the replacement for the Bodine Bakery, we're presuming? Well, okay. Later on in the piece, you'll see that it says, today Pacific Wharf is home to eateries featuring sourdough bread, ice cream sundaes, delicious Mexican fare, Asian dishes and I'm reading an old article. Never mind. You go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, and then Rita's turbine blenders, which we did see a sign for that. Um, in our, when we were looking through pictures earlier, we saw, yeah. Um, an old fashioned, an old fishing net tannery across from the cafe has been converted to Rita's turbine blenders, a giant drink dispenser offering delicious margaritas and icy beverages. So, um, yeah, and then they'll get some new menu items like Cucina Cucamonga and Giardelli Soda Fountain and the Chocolate Shop. So it looks like, I would say, Bodine's Bakery. Live in the Bay Area? How would you just pronounce that? Which one? <laughs> Bo which word do you think? How do you pronounce it? I don't know. You I probably think it right. You I think there's debate up here as to how to pronounce it. So, but earlier we were, we were noticing a line for a line, a sign for 
What did the sign say, Kyle? Exactly. But, okay, so Aunt Cap, this place is going to offer soups in freshly baked Bodine sourdough bread bowls. Yes. Woohoo! And it is clearly the Pacific Wharf just rethemed to Aunt Cass Cafe. And based on that sign, perhaps perhaps the tour will remain. Well, it says something about the bakery in the thing as you were scrolling. I just didn't get a chance to. All right. Let's check it out. Um, when the transformation is completed, locations across the area from Cappuccino Cart outside the San Francisco Gay Bridge to the bakery tour will be decked out in street art and colorful banners celebrating the Big Hero 16 and their victory over Yokei. Yoki. Yokai. I think this is final confirmation that the bakery tour will remain. No. Lack of response says yes to me. No, I was looking at the <laughs> You can read it for yourself. Yeah. Oh, cool. We did, what we did not get here is an opening date, unfortunately. Summer. <laughs> but that's soon. I mean, it, summer officially started now. yesterday, so <laughs> maybe it's open. I don't think so. Right. I don't think so, Tim. And they say so, new uh, menu items are coming to Cucina Cucamonga and um, Ghirardelli with this transformation. So that'll be fun, too. And uh, cool. So that's really exciting. You get some stuff coming to Disneyland. You get some details on it. That is truly exciting. I'm glad that broke during our show. I always love doing the Disneyland breaking Resort, news. I should say. Disneyland Resort. Absolutely. Because perfection is my goal every day. Um, we also got some other breaking news just now. The magic of Disney through music. Ling Lang plays Disney, an original special is streaming September 15th on Disney Plus. And we have a copyright destroying trailer to play. Classical music is part of the success of Disney films. Disney music has this magic power, you know, your, your mind can fly. Our aim is to play some spectacular Disney music, but in a classical music style. You have to touch people's heart, no matter how old or how young to get everyone to have their own young heart moment and to give them new story to tell. I hope this concert will inspire others to achieve their dreams. Must be to subscribe. <laughs> that is actually really exciting to me. I love Disney songs done in other styles, so I'm looking forward to that special. that different to me. <laughs> Because you don't have my trained ear. Yeah, I could really see that. Was that? Did you do that to yourself, or was that Rebecca? I did that to myself. Okay, that's coming to Disney Plus September fifteenth and leaving. Who knows when? So see it while you can. <laughs> <laughs> Probably time to, to retire that one. I don't um, think so. Not until they stop <laughs> taking stuff off, and they haven't done the second round yet, as far as we know. Maybe that uh, the whatever movie you're talking about <laughs> with uh, John Ritter. Maybe it was on Disney Plus. It's now gone. We don't know. No, no. It. They have not retired anything that wasn't original Disney Plus, correct? Uh, well, not uh, original Disney. You mean original to Disney Plus? Yeah. Yes. Um, um, well, well, no. Like, 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 they didn't... like Tomorrowland and stuff has disappeared, but that seems unrelated. Totally unrelated to this stuff. Yeah. The stuff that they are pulling is been taking the right out on his original content. Uh, Jeremiah, really surprised at how much is staying in San Francisco, although he did not put it in the chat, so I probably shouldn't have read it. Um, but I think he's okay with that. I think that's it. I'm looking at the Twitters. I'm surprised that people are surprised. <laughs> like, I, I just, I never thought that the fact that it was going to be Aunt Cass's bakery meant that they had to stop serving Bodine Bakery items. Like, why would you tear on a giant kitchen for a restaurant that does well? Like, yeah, I agree. Um, and I guess we, we can, since we have someone there right now, we should show this. Um, this morning, we 
are at the grand opening of Finnamore Place, a new high-quality, affordable housing community built in partnership with Disney and other members of the Anaheim Resort. It's just a short drive from the Disneyland Resort. And we've got a few pictures on our Twitterville from there this morning. Looks like a fun playground. Gideon would have enjoyed that at one point in his life, but now he's older. And um, a final picture from the swimming thing this morning. That article is now on our website from the 14th Annual World's Largest Swim Lesson. Um, oh, wow, we are also at the Walt Disney Family Museum this morning. We are all over the place checking out a new um, special exhibit for Disney Cats and Dogs, which opens to the public on Saturday. That's why we chose this one of all the exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, as always, Laughing Place is everywhere, every time, all at once. We're Hisa. Everywhere you want to be. be. <laughs> and so, yeah, all of this will be on the site later. Um, but you can always follow our, follow our socials to see them as they happen. I'm surprised that people are surprised. I agree with Luke. Right. Per usual. Okay, Luke. What, Except what? on cheese. Cheese is the only place where we dip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that surprise either. But whatever. Um, I think we're done today. Check in here. Super long show. I love foodie guys. Love having Rebecca on. I like super long show. Foods. And just checking. I see nothing. Always make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, Gowala, and Smoke oh. Signals. We will return tomorrow at 9 a.m. for another one of these, closing out the week, looking ahead to the weekend. Thank you, Kyle. Thank You're you, welcome. Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> Patience Never. of a saint. You, you, you uh, earned... Three seagulls today. So yes, also <laughs> three seagulls. We should keep a track. Yeah, <laughs> and they were all deserved. These were deserved seagulls. Not like yesterday where you seagulled me for the AI thing, which I was. I didn't say everything that I was going. Um, I said more on Zach's of Live, and I was a hundred percent correct. By the way, uh, as it came out later. But. I also want to thank ChatGPT for your assistance today, Aquamarine. Kind of a light shade. Yeah, we're placing the, uh, an actual stat boy that we could have. So, it, Does it count if we don't have a budget for a stat boy, so it's ChatGPT or nothing? Well, huh, weird. It's almost like kind of what I was saying, how you don't have to have an opening title sequence. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.